Thank you for the opportunity to make a submission, which I'll be reading, and apologies for not being able to be there in person today. My name is Catherine Moore and I'm speaking as a concerned citizen and a Palerang councillor, echoing the views of the many constituents who've raised the issue with me, and also those views expressed on the online petition supported by at least 650 different people, none of whom want the mine to go ahead. One comment from a Majors Creek resident encapsulates a lot of concerns. Here are some of them. I've grown up in Majors Creek and the place is very dear to me. Over the years we've seen drought and a lowering water table. There has also been a population increase over the last five to ten years, putting more pressure on the village water supply. The proposed mine uses enormous quantities of water, perhaps not relative to other mining practices, but certainly relative to village use. It would be insane, given recent history of drought and the increasing unpredictability of climatic conditions, not to have a team of independent hydrologists thoroughly assess the impact of the mine on the water table and water quality. I am also concerned about the social impacts of the mine on such a small village. Workers who are only here for work will not have the commitment to the community that people who move here because they genuinely, genuinely love Majors Creek do. This will artificially skew the population and in such a small community this can have enormous and lasting impacts on the culture. At the moment, Majors Creek without a mine has potential for a number of people to operate small, socially and environmentally responsible, sustainable businesses, capitalising on the beauty and tranquility of the place, e.g. small-scale retreats, demonstration farms, market gardens, etc. The music at the Creek Festival brings tourists to the town every year and provides opportunities for local business. The mine will bring quick, temporary money for workers who are mostly from out of town and to the pub, to the detriment of everybody else. Please seriously consider the environmental and social impacts of this mine and the long-term sustainability of the village of Majors Creek, not just profits for a few outsiders. Yours faithfully, Bess Harrison. Our communities are worth protecting and their integrity and the quality of life that people value so highly should not be compromised. I believe that the perceived benefits of this proposal are far outweighed by the disadvantages that the mine would bring, affecting people, agriculture, water and biodiversity. Those who speak against the mine at Majors Creek are sometimes criticised for standing in the way of jobs. But exactly how many jobs would go to local people anyway, compared to the number that would require specialist expertise? Many people in the region, and particularly those in Araluan, downstream from the mine site, already derive their livelihoods from activities that may not be able to continue if this mine goes ahead. With no long-term testing, how is it possible to impose conditions to ensure that groundwater and aquifers will not be affected? If this mine had been in the Sydney catchment, the Sydney catchment authority would have raised big concerns about it. If something goes wrong, the water that supplies thousands of people on the coast will also be threatened. The few jobs that this development may bring to the area and the small improvements to roads and some Braidwood facilities do not weigh up against the major impacts it will have in the long term. I think we should be very concerned when a mining company requires employees to sign confidentiality agreements that are not related to commercial and confidence matters. A major operation like the one proposed for Majors Creek needs to be open about and accountable for its activities. What exactly has already taken place in the lead up to approval that has required confidentiality agreements to be signed? Why is there such disparity between what the local community is told by Cortona and what its shareholders are told? Locals were initially lulled into a false sense of security by Cortona that this was just a small operation. But shareholders hear a completely different story. Many people are concerned that once the infrastructure is in place for this mine, the tentacles will spread out into the wider region over which exploration rights already exist. This concern is borne out by statements and media releases on Cortona's own website, which all conclude with the words, Cortona's multi-pronged plan is to progress Darg's Reef to production in conjunction with aggressive near mine and regional exploration programs to underpin a long-term gold production business. Cortona announced on August 17 that it had secured a processing plant for the Dugs Reef Gold Concentrate near Parks, New South Wales, with a shorter transport distance than budgeted by Cortona in its feasibility study, that the agreement covers the current reserve life for the Dugs Reef Gold project and includes an option to extend as the Dugs Reef project grows. We would be looking at multiple truck movements a day passing through Braidwood and presumably Bungendore and all the way to Parks for years to come. No wonder people have no confidence when they are told that it will just be a small operation. 
This community has been reassured that cyanide and other toxic chemicals, apart from xanthates, will not be used as the processing will be carried out elsewhere. I wonder how the community in parks will feel about that and about the large volumes of water that will be required. We should not support an activity just because the most dangerous parts of the processing are taking place off site. We have some responsibility in regard to other affected communities and their water supplies as well. Mining is taking over this country and a growing number of people are starting to question how this is being allowed to happen. As far as coal seam gas goes, more than 55 million hectares across New South Wales is already covered by licences and applications for mining and gas exploration and development. This represents more than 70% of our state, including our best agricultural land and many areas of high conservation value. Mining corporations have had a free reign for far too long. They have not been required to prove before commencing operations that there will be no long or even short term detrimental effects on the environment or the community. But luckily people are starting to mobilise and say enough is enough. Palarang Council considered Cortona's proposal at the November 2010 Council meeting in Braidwood, held at the National Theatre to accommodate the large number of people who were expected to attend, and attend they did. As everyone is aware, Council is not the consent authority for this proposal, but we were keen to make a submission. Our final resolution on the issue was that Council express its concern about the adverse implications of this mine if it goes ahead and ask that the State impose conditions that are as rigorous as necessary. This request was preceded by the request for 12 hour, not 24 hour days and no work on Sunday, essential for the well-being of residents if this proposal were to go ahead, in addition to a large number of issues that needed to be addressed, including those relating to endangered, critically endangered and threatened species, test bores close by and also within six kilometres for a year before mining, the employment of an independent hydrologist, testing of all water returned to creeks and aquifers, and compensation if livelihoods were affected. This mine might bring some wealth to a small number of shareholders, and it might even bring some short-term benefits to the community. But how would these weigh up against the damage that may be done to the water system and the orchards which produce food and provide employment, and to the biodiversity which is present? Our biodiversity is increasingly threatened by human activities, including increased greenhouse gas emissions, and we need to do everything we can to ensure that what remains has an opportunity to survive and thrive. It is concerning that state and federal governments do not see past the short-term gains that mining activities bring. Before the state election in March, the then member for Monero said he supported the Majors Creek gold mine because it would create 80 jobs, there would be conditions that did not allow water quality to be affected, and in any case, we all needed gold. The current state government has not given any indication that it disagrees with this position. I cringe when I see the gold price going up, and at the end of last week it was at a record high because I know that this will translate into more speculators proposing more gold mines, affecting and displacing still more communities and impacting on more water systems. Given that apparently most of the official gold in the world exists in the form of gold bullion secreted in bank vaults, 30,700.1 tonnes are the latest World Gold Council figures, as well as in discarded electronic devices including mobile phones, phones and computers, it is hard to argue that this proposal is essential for our well-being. Yes, we need to provide employment, but let's start to be a bit innovative about how we create work for people. It should not be continually at the expense of the environment. We need to recognise our responsibility to look after what we haven't already destroyed, put people before profits and remember that the earth is the only home we have. I believe we're at a crossroads which requires us to question our values and ask ourselves what is really important in life. One path is business as usual, that is consumption and growth propped up by the mantra of jobs and the acquisition of material wealth, leading to an ever increasing gap between rich and poor. Centralised decision making unduly influenced by big business. Unlimited extraction of animal, vegetable and mineral resources through activities that continue to divide communities, pump greenhouse and other pollution into the atmosphere and extract large amounts of water from rivers and aquifers. Another path leads to the creation and the maintenance of healthy, cohesive, innovative communities who are able to decide their own destiny and who recognise the importance of meaningful, benign and productive work which contributes to the health and ongoing viability of their local environments and allows everyone to reach their full potential. 
The only way that we can guarantee that this community and the environment supporting it will thrive now and into the future is by ensuring that this mine does not go ahead. Thank you.